I'm here in a, an objective disposition. I'm merely here per the request of our wonderful and fearless and walk the walk leader, Dr. Willie Wilson. And so he asked me to just give a primer, an objective primer, on what it is that the state is spending as it relates to the people in this room, Bruce Browner, black people. And so, you know, it's election year. I'm up, my senator is up, and everybody else is up in the state, at the state level and the county level. It's important for you to understand today, not necessarily on the color line, but on the spin line, on the dollar line. Because if it doesn't make dollars, it doesn't make sense. If you look at some of the dynamics that's, uh, that's really plaguing our particular community, and it impacts your churches as well, it's really on the economic end of things. The reason that there's an abject level of violence and poverty in our particular community is because folk have lost some, a large chunk of hope. There's a major disconnect between the haves and the have-nots. That chasm is growing wider because the city, the state, especially, has not done what we were supposed to do collectively and see into it that we close those economic gaps. You say, well, the, well you know what? The government is on one end, the private sector is on the other end. Yeah, that's true. Let's look at a little bit of history here. Then I'm gonna get right specifically to the numbers. My presentation will not be long at all because I'm just gonna spew the numbers as they are factually at the state level. If you look at the Irish when they came here to this great country, if you look at the Italians, if you look at the Jewish community, they were isolated into, or rele relegated in certain neighborhoods in New York, in New Jersey, in Chicago, in Florida. Most of them were poor. They came here, like, well, unlike us, they came here through Ellis Island and um, through Plymouth Rock, and as Malcolm X said, Plymouth Rock landed on us. <laughs> but they were in ghettos. They, were, they had some of the, the most difficult neighborhoods. Their schools were not superior. They had menial jobs. They had a really, really tough time or humble beginning as we are experiencing right now, yet still. And so what did government do at the federal level, at the state level, at the local level? They intervened. They connected the private sector with the public sector and came up with partnerships and synergisms that made sense to help leverage them out of their respective economic impoverished situation. Mm -hmm. They gave them contracts. Mm -hmm. They gave them jobs. Mm -hmm. They spent money. When America and the, our European allies fought against Hitler and his regime in Italy, we came up with, after the Second World War, what they call a Marshall Plan. Mm -hmm. The Marshall Plan, which was named after General Marshall at that particular time, simply said, look, we're going to rebuild this entire nation. We're going to nation build. We're going to fix all the buildings, the roads, the infrastructure. We're going to give people an opportunity to get a, a grander sense of hope for themselves so they can take themselves to the next level. So we should be playing a similar role here in the state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. But the, yeah, that's true. I agree with that. And so, Part of the challenge is, at the House and the Senate level, we authorize a state budget. We then give the budget to the governor. And the, budget, the governor simply, he has the authority to spend all the money. See, Maddie Hunter and I really finished our legislative job May 30th. All right. We said, here, governor, mm -hmm. here's a big old 34 plus capital, plus fees, plus federal, um, matching funds for health care, for schools, for Medicaid, for roads, comes up to about 80 plus billion dollars. Here, you spend the money. Here's the purse. Some of you preachers know what I'm talking about. You give your money to the first lady, and the first lady, she does what she does to take care of the house and, and keeps things in order. Some of you female preachers and deaconesses, well, I don't know if you give it to your husband, but I think you all get my point, all right? So we, the legislature authorizes the governor's office to spend the money. So let me tell you how he's been spending the money. I have four particular agencies I'm going to focus on, our largest, some of our larger agencies. 
The first one is the Illinois Toll Authority. I'm going to highlight that, the Illinois Public Health Department, big spin right there, DCFS, another large spin, and Central Management Services. So let's get right to it. CMS, or Central, Central Management Services. Um, last year, well, 2013, we allocated 925 contracts to vendors. Contracts were awarded. Of those 925 contracts, 48 of them were awarded to minority business enterprises. So let's deal with, now that, that's the, the, the hard number. Let's talk about the numbers on the spin, on the actual spin. So Central Management Services last year spent $12.769 billion. Is my math correct on this? Mr. Holmes? Okay, all right. So this is what we spend. Only 179 of those dollars were spent on people that look like us here in this room. All right, let's go to... Let's go to the Illinois Department of uh, Family Services. Seven nine million, correct. Now again, I'm getting this, these numbers from the Illinois Family Commission. Uh, Mike Holmes is our director. Uh, we create, the Black Caucus created them back in 1993, if I'm not mistaken, 94, and their job is to monitor each agency's spin. Because here's what we don't do, ladies and gentlemen. We do not discriminate when it comes to taxing any and every last one of our selves here in this room. When you go to the grocery store, we don't care if you're white, black, brown, red, yellow, Puerto Rican, or Haitian. You pay taxes. As a matter of fact, Commissioner Larry Rogers, we get our money off the top, don't we? Income taxes. Whether you owe, I owe income taxes. Yeah, but as long as you owe, you'll never go broke, snare. All of us pay it at some point. Some of us pay a little differently. Yeah, all right. I need to, to connect with some of you all's accountants up in here. <laughs> I'm not, no pun intended. We don't discriminate when it comes to paying income taxes. We don't discriminate when it comes to paying fees. So why in the world are we discriminating when it comes to allocation of dollars and resources of our money? All right. All right. All right. DCFS. DFS. DCFS awarded five, uh, 1,542 contracts total vendors uh, that were MBE, excuse me, were 114 out of 1,542. Now, keep in mind, you have to include Asians. You have to include white women. White women in this state are the largest beneficiaries of the minority, anything minority, benefits here in this state. Now, in a state like Washington, South Carolina or North Carolina, and I want to say Florida, they eliminated white women as being a part of that minority component. Because white women benefit, if, black women, if white women, if white men benefit, white women benefit. During slavery, you had white men, you had white women. They lived in the big house with the white man, right? They enjoyed the travel and all the accoutrements of having slaves just like the white man. So my point simply is, you know, and by the way, the truth is what it is. And, you know, if this was a predominantly white audience, the truth is what it is. This country had 400 years of slavery, free. They benefited for free. Abraham Lincoln didn't free us because it was the right thing to do. Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves because it was the economic thing to do. Now, you can check with any historians. Most of the Lincoln historians don't look like me. That's what they said. And if you look at the real history, that was a fact. So let me, let me finish with DCFS. So they spent about, thank you, Mr. Holmes, DCFS, they spent $2.1 billion. Now, according to this right here, um, zero, excuse me, 0 .039 was spent on African Americans. Now, I can go through these numbers. Let me hit, over, hit the last two. That was DCFS. Public health. Public health is, a, is the biggest spend because the Medicaid dollars. Now, let me tell you another myth while I'm pulling this up. Most, the, the stereotype of who's on public welfare is what? Us. Now, I told you all, I'm not, a, I'm not at the federal level. I'm not an alderman. I'm at the state level. And at the state level is where, because I grew up on it in Cabrini Green, 
is where the Medicaid, public welfare, is administered. Am I right? Y'all was going, you had, had to get a state identification card, state uh, medical card, Medicaid, right? That comes from us, Maddie and I. The more, the most people on public welfare are white. Not only in the state of Illinois, but in Mississippi, Louisiana, and South Carolina. That's because there are more white people, right? If you, most of our money is spent in the nursing homes. Most of our monies are spent in CELA. And so those are the facts. But stereotypically, they put Shaniqua and Tyrone them on the camera. So here's what they're spending, by and large. Um, $9.9 billion was spent. Only $6.4 were spent on. This, again, these are minorities. Bus well, just uh, narrow down that number to about 20%, if that. And you have to account for front companies. I'm almost done. Oh, here comes the fun part. The Illinois Tollway. Now, I know some of y'all in here got nice cars or not nice cars that can at least drive past a toll authority, correct? So in other words, we pay tolls too, right? Again, we don't discriminate against what, car you, what kind of car you're driving, what kind of hairstyle you're working with, if, you, if your drawers are clean or dirty. You better pay that toll. And if you don't, we're going to clock you, and we're going to get our money. See, government, we get ours off the top. So there was insufficient data on the MBEs, but the total spent on procurement was $566 million, Mike Holmes? Okay, that's what the agency gave us. And guess what? Uh, by the way, 126 vendors, um, 26 were awarded, uh, were awarded to MBEs. So if there are 26, anybody minority, white women, Asian, and black, Hispanic as well, by the way. Yes. So you do the math. There are 26 that went to, uh, to, the, to that category, probably about what? Help me, Manny. About five or seven of us. If that, not much. So what's my point? I'm done. The point of the matter is, under this administration, and I'm a Democrat, and I can't speak for the next administration, because I don't know who that's going to be, by and large. But here's what the facts are. It is an abysmal, sad situation here in this city, in this state, for us to be scratching for these kibbles and bits. If we are 15% of the state's population, mm -hmm. so let's say out of $40 billion, just give us 15%. Uh -huh. Then you won't have to talk about raising the minimum wage. Right. Yeah. And then you won't have to talk about going all the time downtown to shop. Mm -hmm. Then you won't have to have or experience a food desert that is so consistent on the west side, on the south side, yeah. in the south suburbs, and some of these poor black western suburbs. Just cut us in or cut it out. Yeah. Yeah. Because we are taxpayers too. We're patriotic as nobody else would believe. We respect the law. We go to church on Sunday, don't we? See, if we ain't working, if we ain't eating preachers, um, the church body is weak the moral fabric of society it decreases because people are they're, they're trying to say, I'm trying to eat tonight. I ain't thinking about going to nobody's church, no one's synagogue, nobody's mosque. So this is a collective battle. And I'm going to challenge our current governor and any other candidates, Bruce Rauner, you too, you right here. We, we ain't strangers to each other. But this is serious for us. This ain't nothing to play with. Because those shots, you know, here's what we know. Black people are getting gunned down on a consistent basis. Yeah, yeah. Now, since we, ain't, we, we don't want to skew that fact, see, stereotypically, we put that in our head, even if, if we know who got shot. 15% of the population. 58% of the prison population. Is that out of default? Are we less intelligent than any other people in this city or state? We just... The biggest chasm is the access to opportunity. That's it. Mm -hmm. And we've never asked you to give us something. Yeah. Yeah. Just open up the door and we'll get it ourselves. Yeah. That's it. So I just want to conclude. I want to thank our 
leader, Dr. Wilson, for bringing all of these spiritual leaders, intellectual giants, and people who really walk the walk in a lot of our communities. They walk in communities where a whole lot of other people don't want to walk. But as long as I'm down there, and by the way, I represent from 79th Street all the way to Division and LaSalle. I go from the Gold Coast to the Soul Coast. I don't apologize for what the facts are. This jacket ain't red. This head is big. We have a serious charge, and it starts, and it will begin, and it will end at the state level. Thank you all, and good morning. My name is Ken Duncan. All right. So we'll get ready to bring Bruce up. Let me thank uh, uh, Senator Chairman Duncan for his remark. I thought it was very enlightening. Y'all give him a hand, all right? <laughs> very enlightening. When we know the facts, we can, you know, deal with it better. All right? So uh, we appreciate him and um, Senator Hunter and then the, all the other politicians for coming here, particularly today. One piece of announcement, I just got a text from the governor so he won't be here today. So we'll, we'll. All right, so we'll, we'll have a little time here. So I'm able to bring uh, um, uh, Bruce up, so let me put that out there. So after that, after Bruce gets done, we'll have a few questions and answers, all right? And then we can go from there. I believe that if the media are going to ask any question, they won't do it here. They can do it in a private room or something like that. I'm going to ask them to respect that because this is a public, you know, Chicago state, all right? So I don't want to get uh, Dr. Wayne in any kind of situation, okay? So y'all understand that, right? Okay, so we have to do that separate, all right, and, and go from there. And those are rules that I didn't make, okay? But nevertheless, uh, he did a good job on, on what he was talking about. It just, uh, we, we're asking for just, just fairness. You know, if you can pay a fairness and work rent, unemployment conversation, you can do the same thing without dollars. Right. line to it. So let me ask Bruce to get ready to come out. Let me, uh, I got a chance to meet Bruce a while back, and uh, so he's going to come and you judge him for yourself. Mm -hmm. no. You be the judge. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we must do is vote. Yeah. Okay. 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 And I'm asking all of you all to adhere to that for me and put the push on all of the churches to put voter registration in the churches. And in businesses, we ask you to do the same thing. Can I get an amen on that? All right. That is critical. If you don't vote, you ain't getting nothing. Right. Okay? So that'll be our biggest push after this meeting mm -hmm. today. Right. Lastly, when I bring Bruce on, we are getting together again for another meeting to, to, to work with all our alderman people and elected officials to make sure that we talk to them. If we're going to send them in the office, they should be doing what we want them to do. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay? Amen. So that's our next meeting. Amen. Coming up, all right? all right? All right. So make sure that you sign up your email address and your good cell number. <laughs> all right? All right. Well, yeah, that's right. One that's not going to get turned off. Oh, Bruce yeah. said, Bruce said, all right? <laughs> so anyway, here comes Bruce. So he'll come in. After he get done, uh, we're going to take some questions from the floor. But the first thing we're going to address is what's on that board. And then we'll come down to public safety and things of that nature. We'll put that on the back end of the list, but that is important. So we're coming down to that. Make sure you got your cell phone on silent. So if you need to go outside and talk uh, in another room and talk, you may do so, okay? All right, so let's uh, give Bruce a round of applause and get ready to come, all right? Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. It's an honor to be with you. I'm very excited to be here. I'm here because I want to go to work for you. Our government in Springfield is not working for you. It's not working for the families of our state. 
it's failing, it's broken, and our families in Illinois are suffering. And that's why I decided to run for office. I'm not a politician. I've never run before. But I've been battling trying to improve the lives of families in Illinois for a long time. A lot of my friends in the business community are leaving the state. They've given up. They'd rather go where opportunities are better. They're going to Texas and Florida and Tennessee and Indiana. And, I, and, I, and many of them said, Bruce, you should give it up too. You should move your businesses out of state. Come with us. And I said, no. I love Illinois. I love Chicago. I was born and raised here. And I will fight with everything I got to restore the quality of our lives for our families here rather than leave the state. I was born here in Chicago. I grew up here, lived here basically my whole life. We raised our six children here, built businesses here, and I love it here. I want Chicago to be a great city again for every family in Chicago, not just some. I want Illinois to be a great state, a proud state again for every family, not just some. And I want to restore the American dream for everyone in Illinois. That's why I'm running. Let me be clear. Our system is going to fundamentally get transformed. I know how to do it. But I don't have all the answers, but I know how to solve problems and build teams. And I want to be with a team with you. I want you on my team, I want to be on your team, and I want to work together to solve problems and get things done. I've been a team builder my whole life. I've been a problem solver my whole life. I want to bring that into Springfield and drive results. Because right now, we're not getting results. We're getting a lot of talk. Talk's cheap. We got to look, we got to look at what people do, not what they say. My wife and I have worked hard for years and years to benefit the opportunities for every family in our state. I believe, as the Bible says, to whom much has been given, from whom much is expected in return. You know what, I didn't inherit any money. I come from middle class background. And my grandparents were pretty low income folks. They lived in a double wide trailer. Got some dairy cows and some corn. My grandfather taught me three things in life. He said, Bruce, always work your hardest, give 100% to whatever you do, get a great education, because that's a key to your future, and you give back in your community, because everybody needs some help. And we all have a moral obligation to each other to help each other. We're all in this together. We all owe it to each other to help each other get a better life. And that's the way I've tried to live. My wife and I, for years and years, have tried to be advocates for every family, especially African-American families. My wife is the CEO of a not-for-profit organization called Ounce of Prevention. Mm -hmm. They run child care service programs, not-for-profit, with a heavy education component, so our youngest children, growing up especially in poverty, have a great education opportunity when they're very, very young, when their brains are just developing and forming. So when they get to first grade, second grade, third grade, they're ready to grow and thrive and do great in school. And she does terrific work. They do God's work. And I'm very proud of her. And I'm a big supporter of that. Myself, I've worked to try to improve education for years. I believe, my wife and I believe, that education is the great equalizer for our society. That's the key. That's the key to the American dream. That's, that's what unlocks doors. That's what creates opportunity for rising income, better opportunities, higher quality of life generation after generation. And the fact that we have failing schools, and far too many of them are in African-American neighborhoods. This, it's just not acceptable. No excuse. So my wife and I have tried to give back. We don't have all the answers, but we fund teacher training. We fund principal development. We funded voucher programs for low-income students. We followed scholarships for low-income students. And I've tried to support uh, institutions up and down everywhere I can. I look forward to uh, getting to know Chicago State better. I don't know this school very well yet. I'm excited to be here. I look forward to learning more and seeing where I can support. 20 years ago, I endowed a full professorship and some scholarships to Morehouse College in Atlanta. It's a terrific historically black college that does, does great work, and I was honored to support them. And we've tried to give back every way we can. We build health clinics. We built a Red Cross. My wife and I try to give back. We love Chicago. We love the state of Illinois. But we want it working for everybody, just for some folks. So to, I'm here together with you to listen, to learn, to share. I don't have all the answers. I'm going to tell you, I don't have all the answers. But I know how to get teams together to solve problems. And that's what I want to do with you, in partnership with you. I've been honored to get to know Dr. Wilson. I'm a big fan of his. He's a guy who gets stuff done. I like that. I like that. And he calls it as it is. And he's, you know, he's, 
He's, he's, laid, he's laid it out to me real crystal clear, and I like that. And I'm honored to work with him. I've worked, I've worked with Reverend Meeks. I've worked with Reverend Hatch. I've worked a bit with Reverend Thurston. You know what? We have great leaders here who are problem solvers, who are doers. And I want to work with doers to deliver results. That's why I'm here. Here's, here's the core issue. We have got to have a booming economy where every family in Illinois, in the city of Chicago, has multiple job opportunities to choose from. And we need a great education system so our young people are trained for the jobs that are available. And we have to bring back vocational training and job training and technical training back into our public school system so our young people are trained for the jobs that are available. Because we have one of the highest unemployment rates in America but we also have thousands of jobs going unfilled in Illinois because our young people aren't trained to fill those jobs. And that's a failure of our education system. That's a failure of our leaders. And I want to change that. We have a brutally high unemployment. Unfortunately, the unemployment rate in the black communities double the average unemployment rate. It's outrageous. It's unacceptable. And even though the African American community is 15% basically of Illinois, well, uh, black businesses, black owned businesses are only 9% of businesses. Mm -hmm. We've got to double that. Mm -hmm. You know what? And I've, I've worked with the SBA in Washington, D.C. We had a, a small business investment company was part of my venture capital firm. There used to be something called a minority enterprise small business investment company organization. That's mostly been lost and frittered away. I believe we can come up with creative solutions to come up with financing for African-American businesses to get equity and subordinated debt and financing so that they can grow. Because it's critical that the businesses grow in local neighborhoods, where folks live, where people don't have to travel an hour and a half to get to a decent job. And we've got to get this done. And here's, and here's, here's a fact I'll tell you, too. I've been traveling the state for the last 18 months, seven days a week. And I've loved every minute of it because the people of our great state are terrific. But here in Chicago, as I've traveled, I've met with business owners, decent mid-sized business owners, who's told me, Bruce, I didn't want to have to leave Chicago, but we've moved this company. We're moving it to the suburbs because of the crime. We're fearful for our employees' safety. We won't stay here where our employees at risk. Think about how damaging that is. Not now, not only do we have loss of life for our innocent children, we have loss of opportunity for all our African-American owned businesses that are all around that neighborhood. So when that decent sized employer leaves, all those opportunities are lost. Yeah. We are in an economic death spiral and we've got to turn it around. And unfortunately, I just don't think our elected officials today get it. I don't think they understand what it's going to take. We need to bring back community policing. We were talking about that this morning. We need to come up with solutions that work to change our system, because it's failing us right now. Yeah. And I'm here to listen and learn and work with you. I'm honored and excited to be here. I look forward to a good ongoing dialogue. This is just one of many steps. I'd love to have you part of our team. I'd love to get to know you and your communities. I'm speaking at many African-American churches on Sundays, often Sunday, Sundays two or three. I'm listening to learning and traveling the state. I was born in Chicago. My family actually left Chicago for public schools. They were worried the schools weren't good enough. I grew up in Deerfield, up in Lake County. My dad worked at Motorola, my mom was a nurse. But I love Chicago, and I want it working for every family here, and I look forward to going to work for you and with you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to have Bruce to address a uh, few of those questions on the board there, and then we take some question and answers, all right? Uh, one another piece of information. The governor sent a young lady, one of a young lady by the name of Chris Thomas to to represent him, and I sent an email back and told him I couldn't, we wouldn't take a replacement. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> we just talk through, should we talk through the four points? Yeah, right. All right. Okay. <laughs> and the, and okay. The one, uh, okay. 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 All right. All right, so let's talk about some of the issues that uh, Dr. Wilson put up there and start to begin to talk about some, some uh, uh, answers to some of our challenges. First up here is to talk about the African American Church Initiative Program. Listen, our pastors, our reverends, and I've met with dozens and dozens and dozens around the state, they're terrifically talented folks. 
and they are all about serving the community. That's right. mm -hmm. All about improving the quality of family life here in Chicago and in the state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. So I'm honored and excited to work with our reverends and our pastors and our religious leaders. Mm -hmm. And I'll do that in every way that I can. And I'd like to form an alliance and a group to advise me on how we can best work with church leaders here in Chicago and in the state. As I mentioned, I've already been working with many reverends and re many pastors, mostly around school improvement and education, but there are all kinds of social services, all kinds of training that can be done through the well-structured, well-run churches that we have here. And I'm excited to learn more and form a good partnership and alliance to get that done. Now, here's, let's, next up is, is a compliance review and best practices. Here's, here, this is an important issue. I believe and I've, the reason we've had success in business is what we do is we study what other organizations do, learn from them, and uh, frankly, take their best ideas. Learn from them, take their best ideas, and sometimes take their best people. And, and then go reproduce what they were doing or what was working, and then try to make it better. That's the way to compete. And you know what? We in Chicago, we in the state of Illinois, we're out, we're competing. We're competing with Indiana. We're competing with Tennessee and Wisconsin and Texas. And we're going to be the strongest state, so our families are the most prosperous, so we're going to steal the best ideas. We need to study best practices. What is working in different communities? What is working in some cities? What is working in other states? Learn from it and take those ideas and apply them here. Mm -hmm. I am all about that. I need your help to do that. Many of you already know what's working in your neighborhood or in a certain city or a certain community. We need to know what's working so we can expand it and roll throughout the state, throughout the system. I want to form an alliance and a partnership with you. I've asked Dr. Wilson to help me put together a group of advisors, an advisory board, a task force, to advise our administration, be part of our campaign, but also the key is part of the governance after we win in November. We've got to deliver results. You know, we, I don't want to talk about stuff. I'm not a big talker. I'm a doer. I want to get results. It's easy to say things. It's hard to do things. And I want to work as a partner to get this done. We've got to make sure when we set a goal, it's a realistic goal, and we achieve the goal. Don't set goals and then, and then ignore them. We've got goals about helping the African-American community in contracting. We've got goals for how many African-Americans should be participating in our government in different programs. We got the goals, and we ignore them. That's a fact. You know what? No more. If I'm going to set a goal, we're going to achieve the goal. All right. And we're not going to have a goal, I'm going to say it, okay, that's not a goal. All right? That's fine. But let's be upfront and honest about it. Let's be very direct about it. Let's not make a promise and not deliver. I'm not about making a promise and not delivering. This is the key. And I need your help. I need you to hold us accountable, but be part of the process. So it's not insiders and outsiders and people laying blame and pointing fingers. We're in it together. We're solving the problems together. That's the whole key. Uh, a similar issue on statewide accountability. Um, we, we've, we should have, find ways that we can have African-American businesses fundamentally major players in the contracting process, in the service provision process. There's, there's, there's answers to this. I have to say, I don't have all the answers. If I did, I'd, you know what, I'd, <laughs> we, we, the place, we would be in a very different place. I need, a, I need your help to find the answers. I need to learn is what working in other communities and get it done. I know we can do it. I've met with uh, many talented African-American entrepreneurs. They're struggling with financing. They're struggling with opportunities to grow their business. I know I can help fix the financing problem. That's why I come from Finance World. I know I can fix the financing problem. But we've got to fix the contracting problem and the way that it's open and fair and competitive so a competitive business has a real shot at getting the business. I need your help to figure that out. This ain't rocket science. We'll get it done. But I need your help to get it done. Oh, parity in education and safe neighborhoods. So this, this is absolutely essential. As I said, we believe nothing's more important than education. That's our future, that's our competitiveness. It, if you look at every challenge we've got, low incomes, crime, uh, lack of opportunity, high unemployment, you look at every challenge we've got, education may be not the sole solution, but it's a major building block of the solution. The one thing I can tell you is I know that our education funding formula for the state of Illinois is broken. It's corrupt. We do not have a fair funding formula for state support of education. 
We need to reform it. But we also are 49th, at least we were. We, I don't know, Ken, you may know better. We used to be, are we 48th? Yeah. For, we're 48th. <laughs> For 48th out of 50 states for state support of education. That's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We've got to change that. It should be the number one place where we put our tax dollars supporting our children for their education for their futures. We should stop cutting education when we don't have to. And that's what's going on the last five and a half years. Education should be the priority. We don't play political football with it. No matter what else is going on in the economy, the education dollars are protected. That's our kids' future. And we'll come up with a new education funding formula. I've gotten to know Ken in recent years. He's a terrific public servant. I'm going to work with leaders in the Black Caucus and the other legislators to solve that problem. We need a new education funding formula. We, uh, we know we've got to get that done. I'll work cooperatively with them to do it. Then the safe neighborhoods. Look, the, cr the crime is, it's horrible. And unfortunately, it's not just in Chicago. The media likes to spin it as it's in Chicago. It's all over the state. We don't have the economic growth, the economic empowerment, and our children don't see their futures, so they're resorting to gangs. And they aren't receiving an, a good education, and they feel it, they know it, they are not being getting job training and vocational training in their schools. They feel it and they know it, and they don't see their future. So they're resorting to joining the gangs and willing to risk their lives because they look at their lives and say, gosh, my life isn't worth that much anyway. I don't see my future. Mm -hmm. It's tragic. Yeah. It's the great moral crisis of America today. Mm -hmm. We've got to change that. We need a strong business climate, especially where minority businesses, African-American business, are strong and invested in growing. And we need world-class schools. And we will we'll see our crime problem diminish substantially by doing that. Mm -hmm. We can't let the politicians come up with other excuses or other programs. It's all about economic growth, economic empowerment, and world-class education. And then supporting our families the way my wife's organization does, struggling families, especially single parents who need some help to get through the day and need an opportunity to educate their youngsters when they're not in school. If we do those things, we are going to reduce the crime problem dramatically, and we're going to have a better shot at the American dream for all our families. So I look forward to working with you to get those things done. And we can go into more detail on specific questions as you like. But I'm, I'm very committed to you. I want to run a campaign in partnership with you. I want to go to work for you after we win in November. Thank you very much. Yeah, well, we just yeah. talked a little bit about you it. Did, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The one, uh, Willie, the one. What's that? The one that doesn't make, no. Uh. So, um, Mr. Coleman, Percy Coleman, was visiting about community policing um, earlier when we had a meeting. We've got to come up with some ways to really have public safety uh, effective. It's, it's not working today. And, and I don't, again, have all the solutions. We should study what what's, uh, has worked um, in the past. Um, Mr. Coleman, I don't know if you'd like to uh, talk about this, the solution that you were uh, uh, addressing earlier, but I'm all about coming up with uh, solutions, not just more of the same. And uh, could you come up and, okay. Well, I have one solution. Uh, Gary McCarthy must go. Yes. He has proven that he, hold on, let me say this here. Hold on, real quick. <laughs> Gary McCarthy. You tell me what man or woman, especially if it was a woman, if they had this type of record of an abys he's been an abysmal failure of how to police and strategize in our respective communities. Can you imagine this is happening on the in the Millennium Park side of my district or in Lincoln Park? Now all of it, all of us deserve protection, equal protection under the law. First thing is to get rid of Gary McCarthy. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm going to ask, uh, go ahead and allow, I'm going to take question and answer in a few minutes, all right? I, I just want to get, make sure that uh, he make a few points that Bruce, that he brought up in our other meeting today. And so I'm going to give him like five minutes on this right here. And then I want to take some question and answer from the audience so that Bruce can hear it from you as well. Okay, so we're going to go that route, all right? Bruce has to be going by 1.30, all right? And so I gotta let him out. So I'm gonna give you enough time, okay? 
All right, so we can take care of that. So, uh, Brother Perez is going to come forward in uh, for a few minutes, and I'm going to turn it back over to Bruce Hand, and we're going to ask a few questions, uh, and then we're going to go from there, and then I'm going to give you another date when we'll be meeting again um, at another time, okay? We spoke uh, about the people we had meet with Bruce earlier today, most of whom were former CHA people, former cops, county sheriffs, and I'm a former chief of police in Fort Heights and Robbins, and I was the commander of community policing for Chicago Housing. We had the most successful community policing program in the state of Illinois and Chicago, and they canceled it. That's what they do, the people in power, when they perpetrate the illusion of inclusion. Community policing was hated by the Chicago Police Department. Leroy Shield forced me on them, sent me all over the country to learn what they were doing in other places. I was looking at the news last night. New York is having all their problems right now, mostly in public housing. Again, what do we have in common with New York? All of the killings and the shootings is in poor and black communities, urban communities inside these major cities. Chicago is not the capital, murder capital of the United States. West side and south side of Chicago is the murder capital of Chicago. All right. All right. The police chief don't know what to do. Not a clue. He don't have a clue. He talked to me one time after my son was murdered by the Chicago cops, and he thought that pacified me. Well, it didn't. It motivated me. All right. And I want these pastors to know I'm on a mission. All right. Here it is. Mr. Runner will have the cream of the crop advising him about community policing that works. Mm -hmm. Tried and tested in Chicago, and it worked. We work with the gangs. We work with the ex-defenders. We work with the second chance program. We work with the churches. We work with the community leaders. All you have to do is pull them back together. Bruce can pull the city, the county, state, and federal law enforcement and elected officials together. We'll pull the community and the churches together. And ain't no gang or no crooked cop, nowhere in the world can stand up to an organization that's organized and know we for real. We have two terrorist groups in the city of Chicago. One is the Chicago gangs, the other one is the Chicago police. And we gonna get rid of both of them. All right, good deal. All right, uh, he gonna come back. And then, uh, thank y'all. Now y'all don't, don't talk too much, you know, give, give me any respect, right? Don't make me look bad, right? Thank you. So we're going to take some question and answer. i bring Bruce right back up here, okay? I, I got some hands. I'm gonna point to you, but I promise you that. But I'm promise you that thing. Bruce gonna gotta be gone at 1.30, because you got to keep your answer short, question short, and get to it. Most of this will be taken then work out and the, the, the committee based out of somebody in his office and the ministers and business and community, all right? So we'll get to those points. So I want you to know that that was why those committee were set up. Keep your question to economic empowerment, okay? Got a lot of hands. After, we'll do this again too, okay? All right. I, don't time, I promise you that. Uh, okay. So uh, let Bruce come back, and then I'm going to take some questions. He got one more, one or two more answers that he got a, a hit on, and then I'm going to take some questions. I didn't have the hands up right there. But I'm going to ask you all, for me, to line up right there five at a time. Stop. Stop. And then that way I'll know exactly what to get off and get on, okay? Bruce. Uh, well, I hear. Oh, you got a mic? Uh, we got a mic. I'm going to ask. person on that side, and then I'll be on this side. Okay, so with, with, with the two people on mic, so I'm gonna have the mic to come. Here, where's the other mic at? Oh, Andre. So here are the two people here. Andre here. So we'll line up some over here and some over there, Andre. Interesting. All right, now I'm gonna ask, come on, five at a time. I tell you what, we're gonna be short. All right, keep, keep where we at now. Next time, five come at a time because that clock track 1.30, we're gonna have to end it, okay? You got it? So Bruce got a couple more coming first. And then we can start with your question, okay? 
And I'm going to have to cut you off if you take more than 30 seconds, okay? Promise you that, but try to keep it short. When we were visiting with a smaller group this morning, about 1030, we talked about a number of issues. One is how we can improve the public uh, law enforcement process, because it's clearly not working very well. Another one of the topics was how we can get more uh, black-owned businesses in the construction industry involved in the contracting process in the city and the state level. And I, to me, this is one we ought to be able to solve pretty darn well, because this is all about fair and open competition and bidding in the process. And it's not like uh, construction requires super advanced degrees, like as uh, uh, Dr. Wilson was mentioning, certain advanced architecture or whatever. This is skills that are widespread, and frankly, where they're not widespread, we can create uh, mentor programs and apprentice programs to learn the carpentry and the plumbing and the electrical work and we can span the opportunities for black owned businesses in the construction trades in, the, in, the, in that field. And let's, let's do that together. We can make that a priority. It's very doable. And we can expand the percentage of the contracts for construction that are made available to black owned businesses. That was one big topic. The other, the other topic that came up with is just the overall process for contracting at the city level and at the state level. Obviously, as governor, I can't control what happens in the city. I can set a tone and recommend techniques, and I want to use the best techniques at the state level and encourage cities to use what works. Um, clearly, uh, and, and the gentleman who spoke this morning with us talked about how he was the low bidder, and got a contract, but he got pressured to give up the contract, and it went to some cronies. It went to some folks who got the, they're politically wired. Well, here's, here's the one thing I can promise you for sure. I can end this patronage, this cronyism, this special deal, and make sure that everything's open to fair and competitive bidding, and that the folks who are competitive get the business. And we can set goals for how many of our black-owned businesses are winning contracts and push and create the environment so they can compete and they, they can be successful in this economic process. It's doable. I need your help. We need to study what's working in other communities and employ the best practices to get it done. But we need fair contracting. We need to set goals for make sure that our government is to work for every family and it should represent in a mix of its contracting and the members of its administration, it should reflect the community. And if we have 15% African American uh, population, only 9% of African American-owned businesses, that's wrong. And if the contracts inside the state government are one-tenth of what the African American population is of business owners, we've got to change that, create the, uh, the training opportunities and the, and the partnership opportunities so that black-owned businesses can compete and get the contracts. And we've talked about that. We've got to come up with solutions, specific technical solutions. That's where if we can form a committee, task force to deal with these issues together, we can come up with the mechanics to get it done. So let's uh, answer a few questions. Is that? Uh, you know what? I need a mic in my hand. So when he's talking, if somebody talking too long, I got to cut him off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I get a mic? But I, I, want, I need a mic too. Okay, okay, give us a second. Yeah, I need a mic. Okay, let us get you one. Hold on. So maybe what we can do, we can take the group here and come right here, right? We got one. He's you got one? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Uh, you know, make sure that, ladies and gentlemen, make, make, make sure that when you ask your question, make it a short for me. Two, 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 check. Oh, I'm going to give you another mic. Yeah. They're going to give you another mic coming up, all right? Check. This one working right. This one here ain't loud as this one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have a loud voice. I can use that one. <laughs> here we go. All right. You got the mic right there? All right, give it back to him. So say we got two lines, we got to go one here and one there, all right? OK. If we understand this, OK, make your question a little short, then we can go from there, all right? All right, Bruce. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Rick Montgomery. I own a small company called Urban Ag. I uh, do a lot of stuff in the community relative to uh, fruits and veggies and that kind of thing. Oh, great. Well, so I'd like to meet thank you, sir. you for well, uh, coming out. And also, uh, character is something you do when nobody else is looking. So if you win or lose, my question to you is this. Are uh, you about to spend approximately $12 million on advertising this season? Could you take about a million and get a compressed natural gas bus to transport African American youth out to the suburbs where these jobs are and create a dynamic or a relationship with these businesses in the suburbs who need employees and thus in the community who have workers? A compressed natural gas bus will solve the problem of getting these guys and girls out to these communities. 
and, and give them efficient transportation back and forth. Well, you're raising an important issue of how we connect our youth to where the job opportunities are. Unfortunately, today we don't have uh, an effective way to get our young people to the job opportunities. Uh, my personal bias is to make sure that the economy is growing in every community, in every neighborhood, so the jobs are local, so our kids don't have to be traveling an hour or an hour and a half to a job. But to the degree you've got some ideas on transportation and logistics that we can get the job done, I'm all ears. I'd love to talk about it in more detail. All right, I think, uh, I'll repeat your question very quickly. You said- My, my question is, okay. first I said we need to get rid of all of the leaders that are in office today because they failed the black community. My question is this, with all the corruption that's going on, lack of economic development in the black community, the closing of 54 black schools in the black community, what are you going to do as governor to make a difference in our community to bring economics a better education system and deal with some of the corrupt politicians that we see every day and see on the news going to jail. Okay, great question. So a couple points. You mentioned something that's very important. You said you're so fed up with the lack of fair contracting and the lack of construction opportunities that you're ready to file a lawsuit. I, I'd love to learn more about your situation, but I would be biased. To, I would uh, recommend that you go ahead and pursue a lawsuit. We've learned the hard way that sometimes getting the system to change requires getting the courts involved and, and pushing on behalf of the folks who are disadvantaged. We saw that in California when they pushed a lawsuit to challenge how tenure is locking ineffective teachers into black communities and low-income kids are suffering. They won in court and it's going to be able to change that system. I think if you guys file a lawsuit, again, I don't know the merits of your case yet, but I would say it's worth battling and taking it to the court if you have to. And here's, here's, here's the bottom line for me. I want to bring in to pe people into the government who are there for the right reasons. They're there as a way to be public servants and give back. I'm personally not going to take a salary. I'm not going to take a pension. And I'm, I'm doing this as my way of giving back. Now, not everybody in my administration is financially in a position where they can take no salary. But you know what? I'm going to recruit folks who are going to give back, are doing it for the right reasons, and are there to transform the government and make it working for you. I've already begun to identify leaders who, who are there for the, to get results for you. Today we've got patronage, cronyism, corruption. We've got folks who are down in, in Springfield working for our current governor for the wrong reasons. They're out to make money for themselves or to pay off their brother-in-law or other favors rather than go to work for you. And I will ch that's the one thing I can promise for sure I can deliver results on. Thank you. Unfortunately, I won't be able to take all of you all questions because it's, it's 10 more minutes to go, okay? So you've got to cut your question to five minutes if we're going to get everybody here, all right? So I, I, mean, I know this is an important topic, but here again, uh, I only have Bruce for a certain length of time today, and we'll do it again so that you're going to have two or three more questions. That's probably going to be it, okay? All right, go ahead. Who's, who, who's next? Right here? Okay. Yeah, just go ahead and ask. First of all, uh, Dr. Wilson, I want to thank you. Thank you. Dr. Wilson, thank you for the opportunity of bringing us together here. Uh, this is a unique opportunity to talk to Mr. Rauner. But I, one thing I wanted to follow up on, you mentioned about voter registration. Folks need to understand that right now, today, in Illinois, we can register folks online. You can take out your smartphone right now and update your voter registration. And that's something that we as citizens, I, first of all, I'm Mark Loveless. I'm, I am a candidate for Chicago City Clerk, but I've also uh, uh, have been a member of the uh, Illinois Common Cause. And that is, ge ge gentlemen, 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 I got my question. I got my question. I got my question. The, 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 last, the, the, the last final to the question is this. Um, when you talk about how do we deal with our economy, one thing we have to do is we have to, have, we have to expand our economy. And unless we're going to be talking about social entrepreneurship, this is, this is why we don't have an economy that's, that's thriving. Because when the answers come, we don't listen to them. My question. Get to your hold for a moment. Hold, hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let Wait me get to this here. Wait hold a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because my question is quite simple. Mr. Mr. Rauner, I've heard you say that you don't have all the answers. 
I've listened to you thoroughly and attentively here today. I've not heard one answer. The one answer that I do know is through social entrepreneurship that what we have done is looked at social impact bonds and evaluated program development. And that's what we're doing now. So, I'm, so I, I still need to have at least one answer. I got one, I know one answer why I'm gonna be supporting the, uh, the current governor is because he at least has social impact bonds. So I wanna- All right. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Have y'all attention for one second, one second. One second. Here we go, guys. Look, everything. I don't understand this. This ain't y'all thing, this is my thing, okay? All right? All right? Okay? So, be straight about it. You know, it was nice enough for me to ask him to come out. Okay? And he came out, we gotta be organized the right way, okay? All right? All right? So we don't have to show this out, right? Okay, so let's be that. We got a few more questions, but I, I got to tell you something. We want to be able to ask everybody here because the fact of it is that he has to go to another meeting. But I'll tell you this much. I'll ask him to come back again, okay, and that he can complete this here. That's the best way I know of how to do it, okay? So probably I want to have an answer for maybe a couple more questions, keep it short, and then we'll have to cut it out, okay? So, and then understand this too. I'm not going to ask this man to step up here and say something that, he got other people more than black people get him elected. He got to get elected before he ain't good for anybody. Okay? So that, I mean, that's the bottom line to it. Okay? So we don't expect him to say anything that gonna piss off some other voters. Okay? All right. So let's do it that way. He is going to be represented for all the people. I think we came here and we've been fair. We ask for only what we're entitled to as a representative of the population for the state of Illinois. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we didn't ask for anything unreasonable, okay? Nobody can argue about that white, black, or whatever color you are. Okay? All right, I'm going to have two more questions, then I'm going to let Bruce to go. Yeah. All right? That's, I'm going to have two questions because he got to go. I'll, I'll, I'll call and meet again, uh, ask Bruce to come out another time and, and, and sit and do it. I know there's a lot of interest in here, and, but, you know, we can do it another time. This ain't the end of the world here. All right. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Arnez Dancy. I'm the president and CEO of the Chicagoland Black Chamber of Commerce and former senior policy advisor for the Illinois State Black Chamber of Commerce. What we're calling for as part of our black economic agenda is a five-year, $5 billion underserved community-funded initiative. It can, it can come from the following state agencies, the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, the Illinois Finance Authority, the Illinois Housing Development Authority, the Illinois Facility Fund, also, uh, Illinois Urban Development Authority, even though it passed uh, the state in 2009, the board still is not in place. We're also calling for full funding of the Office of Urban Assistance. I just gave the agenda. Would, would you support a black economic agenda that will call for a five-year, $5 billion funding initiative? Well, I can't commit to a particular funding level. I can absolutely promise you that I will be a strong advocate and an ally for the Black uh, Chamber of Commerce uh, it, it, in every community all over the state. I've met with many. I'll be meeting with many more. And I'd like to find ways to bring resources into the African-American community. The one thing, uh, we were, somebody was talking about solutions. I've got a specific solution. One of the things that's going on around the state, certain regions, certain communities are forming small private equity funds, ca capital funds, to support their local businesses with equity and subordinated loans. And I believe we can have a state role to support those types of funds in low-income communities where the resources otherwise aren't there. And I believe I could work closely with your Chamber of Commerce to implement that sort of a program. And I'd be honored to learn more about your ideas. My name is Leonard Montgomery, and I'm a very good member of the BCA, the Black Contractors Association. I would like to ask you, since Dred Scott said that black people have no rights that can be respected by any white, what is it about you that would make me believe that after we leave this room, that Dred Scott 
damn it, is not still on top and crushing all of my black brothers and black sisters, including some of you Uncle Tom Negroes in this room right now, that ain't got the heart or the sense Cut the to mic. stand Cut the up mic. when we're being hurt. Right. Cut the mic. What a wonderful public okay. we right. have in here with these uh, here we go. trained Negroes. Here we go. All right, all right, here we go, guys. We are going to adjourn this meeting. All right. Uh, I tell you what, the real question will have to be another time. All right. All right, hold it for a second. Hold it for a second. Hold it for a second. All right, guys. All right, hold it for one minute. Hold it for one minute. Get your attention for a minute. All right. All right, good. I understand this much, guys and ladies and gentlemen. We are going to do this. If you guys are going to talk over there, y'all need to just leave the room. All right? If you need to talk, you need to go outside. All right? So do the respect for what we got them here for so I can get them back again. Okay? You don't want to run them away, right? All right. All right, so listen. We're, we're, we're going to end this meeting because he got to go someplace. All right? One, one question. How long? Is it? Five seconds? Oh, uh, yes, sir. All uh, right, you got five seconds. Um, I have a question about receivership. Abandoned building and vacant building property is a major issue in the, in the south and west side uh, communities. And the receivership is being appointed by the courts. And we need more minority. We have contractors in the neighborhood. We want to know how do we get access to the receivership because right now over 3,000 is being handed out and the judges have the right to appoint who they want. And what they're doing, they're appointing people from the suburbs as receivers. And we want to know how do we become the receivers in the city? That's a good question. I don't have the answer. I would love to visit with you more. I can ask our team to, to talk with you about what's going on in that issue and see if we can come up with a solution. I don't, I don't know enough to have an answer for you today. Thank you. Uh, well, y'all, I want a preacher up here to dismiss with a prayer. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Well, let me say to Dr. Henry, I want you to come up and dismiss with a prayer. And y'all, let me give Bruce a round of applause standing week, okay? All right.